Hey guys, my name is Ryan Walden, and I wanted to show you how to use some of the basic tools in Toon Boom. Most of the tools are pretty much self-explanatory. We have the paintbrush and pencil, the shape tool, we also have the paint bucket, which is right here, and of course we have our mini frames, which we'll be working with today. Alright, to animate in Toon Boom, we'll select our first frame and make a drawing on it by using our paintbrush tool. Now you can use uh, the pencil tool, but I found the paintbrush gives me much smoother lines. Let's just draw a little guy here. Okay, I'm not being very serious with this. Gonna do an eraser right here. Kind of just uh, clean this up a bit. And we have our little guy on the frame. All right, what you want to do now is drag onto the next frame, but you see the drawing has disappeared. That's because we don't have onion layers on, so we cannot see anything. Now if we turn on the onion layers tool, we can actually see our character. We can also set it how far back we want to see things, so we don't really need this that far back. So just like one frame, and there's our guy again. Now then we can draw right over this, and help create our little really short, not really important animation. Let's just uh, draw them. It doesn't really matter right now. This isn't really going to be a serious thing. This is kind of just showing you how to actually use the tool. All right, and we can set our uh, the ending frame all the way back here. Kind of just bring this back. Um, all right. So you want to go to your play tool up here. Before you hit play, you want to hit loop. Turn off the onion layers and play. As you can see, it is really fast right now. You can obviously pause, go to frames per second, which is up here, and let's change that to six and hit play again. All right, so you can see this animation doesn't really make sense and it's really short, but I just wanted to show you guys how you can start using some of the tools, how you can import frames. And that's pretty much it. Now that we know how to use the tool itself, let's try doing something a little more complicated. I'm going to show you how to turn your reference video into a skeleton-based animation. Now when I say skeleton-based, I mean using like bones and joints to figure out like the motion and where everything's supposed to be, which we'll be later be able to flesh out and create a much better animation. Now first thing you want is a reference video like this one. <laughs> So yeah, feel free to use my reference video if you need one, or you can always go out and record your own, it doesn't matter which one, for this tutorial. Now I usually like to use QuickTime when I'm scrubbing through this, because you will need to scrub through this to find your dynamic poses. So for example, let's say this one right here, I want this to be my very first pose. I'll just screen capture that, and I will have my image of it. Now these poses are very important because we'll be using these poses as our keyframes. Once you have your images ready, you can go up to File, Import, Images, go to your browser, and look for, let's see here, yeah, I usually just left my stuff on the desktop, leave my stuff to the desktop, Tag your animation, I just named it BR as in background. Uh, put it in color and hit OK. Now you see I have it on an, it created a brand new layer actually. That's because I did not have this one selected. If that one was selected then it would have posted on that layer. Now we have our base. So you want to select the very first layer, go to your paint tool or paint brush tool and you can start drawing out your skeleton based off of the character itself. I'm a little bit perfectionist, so bear with me. I should probably reduce the brush size a bit. That did not do it. There we go. So it doesn't matter if these are 100% perfect, actually, now that I think about it. Just so much of getting your base reference. And keep in mind, I already have a much better version of this already set up. I just wanted to show you guys how to really do this. 
Um, so yeah, basically just get all your points down. The hips, the leg joints a bit. This is really sloppy right now. Kind of just put that together. A little more joints. The hand itself, you just make one big joint since these are fists right now. If you want, you can go back in later and add a little individual joints and bones to the fingers. And that's pretty much how you start your keyframes. Now I'm gonna skip now I'm gonna skip ahead to a much better file I have of this where I have all my keyframes done. Okay, we are back. I have here a much better version of those keyframes I was talking about. Here they are. You may notice that they go blink for a second. That is because I gave some space in between my dynamic poses in order to put an in-betweens or breakdowns right now actually. So to you do to, put, to do a breakdown, we turn on onion skinning, select our layer because sometimes it won't work with us there. And the best method I found was trying to find like an in-between here. Now of course with this, we want to like hold this a little bit too. So let's draw here, kind of just favoring this guy here. Then we will kind of try to find the middle here, kind of but kind of go in between the lines here. So like between the red and green, that would be where the chest part, part of the chest would be. And the same with down here and over here. Now these lines on the head are very important because they help you kind of navigate where the face should be during all times. So kind of just put that in the middle. Uh, the head is pretty much going to be the same shape, give or take. Kind of just do the chest right here. It's a little ball for the center here. Maybe start lowering this guy a little bit this way. Bring this guy a little bit this way. And pretty much there. Let's add a hip. Mm, legs are gonna be like right about here. I really just follow the joints more than anything, more than the action bones. Put this guy here, put the joint there, down here, joint here. A uh, foot is pretty much going to be the same, maybe a little bit smaller down here. Let's turn off our onion skin and see how that looks. As you can see, it kind of gives that illusion of very quick movement right there. Alrighty then, now then let's skip on to the in-betweens. Okay, so now that we have all of our in-betweens, all our breakdowns, and all of our keyframes pretty much set up, it's time to see what this looks like rendered. Now you can just do this. It's really quick right now, but that's because we're running on ones. That a lot of animators do not like working on ones, just the fact that it takes up time and space. So what we want to do is drag this out, probably there. And this is the method I learned. There's probably a much better method of doing this. You basically just select everything past to, uh, past one, and then you can just simply drag it, and now that's running on. T now the first layer is running on twos. So then we will. So then we can repeat this process by going to every layer except the second one, or every frame beside the second one. Drag that and so forth, and continuing out from that pattern. Alrighty then. Once you have everything nice and spaced out the way you want it, have everything running on twos. It's time to play it and see how it looks much better than the last one. Now here's a little thing I noticed. Now let's go back here. You do not want to end on the very last pose. Not exactly. Let me show you what I mean. Notice how like choppy that looked? That's because it did not have any slowdown. So if we drag that back and go back to where we were last time, you'll notice I added like three extra layers right after that. Actually, no, it was two extra layers. 
But yeah, this gives the illusion that you're slowing down. Plus, it helps make the animation look that much more natural. Alright, so the final part is exporting this into a video file. But before you want to do that, you actually want to... Let's see, you want to create a background. The reason you need a brand new background is because if you try rendering this out, like this is not recognized as a background because we never really put one in. So if we tried rendering out now, we'll just have a blink, we we'll just have a blank surface, kind of just all black. So you basically want to go into your shape tools, rectangle, and create a rectangle slightly larger than your actual camera box. All right, so now that we have that, all you need to do is go to the paint bucket tool. Um, let's try to change the color. I'm trying to remember where I put that. Oh, here we go. Just change the color to white. Just click in there, and you could duplicate the frame all all those times. But the quickest method I found was just dragging to the very end. Make sure you're on the frame you want to transfer everything to, and hit F5. So if we play that again, the background sticks with us through the entire process. All right, now it's time to export this bad boy. Export movie file. Just find your file you want to export it to. Right now, I'm probably just going to export the video to my student file on here. I will just export to the desktop, but since this runs on network, it does not give me access to save Toon Boom stuff on the network. So let's just go to my, it's not right here. Let's go back to this one. Students. Here we go. Then I'll go to my topics class, my file. I already have one already pretty much rendered out. So let's just call this one dagger and e skeleton two, two please. I usually save it as a quick time so that I can scrub through it to make sure everything is working and save. Alright then, now that you have everything you want, you just go ahead, click OK. Now it's exporting. Alright, now let's go to our file that we saved this to. Open it in quick time. Wait for it to load. And now let's see what we came up with. Thank you for watching my tutorial. Next time we will be going back into Toon Boom and actually fleshing out our character, making him look a little more like a person than a skeleton itself. So I hope to see so I hope you found this educational. I hope you were able to use this for your projects, and I will see you next time.